Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special MLK edition of our artist, our live artist talks. Um, my name is Allison Gulick, and I'm the community programs coordinator here at the Walters Art Museum. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Lady Brion, a native Baltimorean international spoken word artist, poetry coach, activist, organizer, and educator, as well as the executive director for the Pennsylvania Avenue Black Arts and Entertainment District. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. Let's jump right into our questions um, with a quick reminder to our audience that they can pose their own questions to Lady Brion in the comment section of Facebook or YouTube, and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. Great. Um, Lady Brian, you wear a lot of hats as an artist, a community organizer, and now the executive director. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your journey into this work and uh, how you first got involved in the arts? Absolutely. Um, so I started writing poetry uh, at a young age. I was actually in middle school um, where I started writing. I was a fan of uh, a show called Deaf Poetry Jam. And I just wanted to be like uh, poets like Sonny Patterson. That was one of my favorites from that show. Um, and I had a really supportive family who gave me a bunch of opportunities to continue to speak publicly. So I started, um, you know, my journey as a performing artist really early. I come from a family of preachers. I was also a debater when I was in high school and I had coaches and teachers who really taught me um, how to take my art form and connect it with um, things that I was passionate about or connecting it to persuasive argumentation. And so um, I think I just had a lot of spaces and places that really pushed me to continue to be a performing artist. And I, I never stopped right through college and then beyond. I've just always um, been on this trajectory as a performing artist. Um, I also have done a lot of work, um, you know, in community with different organizations, especially leaders of a beautiful struggle. And so I think that um, the Black Arts District really was a coming together of those two worlds, my world as a community organizer and activist and my world as an artist. And it was just, you know, the meeting in the middle of those two things. So I'm really happy to be able to be doing this work that's so aligned with, you know, who I am and what I've been doing. Yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, and that's actually how um, I first got introduced to your work was through LBS. And they actually did an MLK um, presentation with us a couple of years ago. Um, speaking of MLK, how do you think about the legacy of Dr. King in your own work as an artist and in your work with the community as the executive director of the Black Arts District? Yeah. So when I'm thinking about myself, I often, um, you know, refer to myself as an activist, right? An artivist, rather. And so an artivist is a combination of art and activism, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so when I think about the way that I approach my own writing, it is to motivate, to help mobilize, to help educate, right? And to help folks empathize with the, the movement, right? That is happening in this time. And, um, you know, I am a, a public speaker and I think just like, you know, MLK, we as poets are using our voice for change, right? And using our art form to attach itself to um, some, some agenda, some movement that we're trying to help connect folks to um, or educate people about. So I definitely see synergy there in, in, you know, the ways in which we approach our art and what ML MLK did for the civil rights movement. Um, when thinking about the, the Black Arts District, I think about, you know, the support that Martin Luther King had um, from the Black Church, right, which is one of the strongest autonomous Black institutions that we have in America. And I also think about the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, right, which was also a collection of Black churches, clergymen, um, and, you know, lay folk who were all coming together to support um, the civil rights movement as well. And so in that way, I think about the Black Arts district and how we are looking to be an autonomous Black institution and create and support other um, autonomous Black institutions, particularly in Baltimore, to strengthen the um, creative economy in this city, as well as support the revitalization efforts that are happening in West Baltimore. Um, I think the last thing that I think about is, you know, I don't know if during that time equity was quite the buzzword, right? People were more so talking about equality. Um, but for me, I know that, you know, 
the civil rights movement was pushing for equality and livable wages um, for black folks in America. And the Black Arts District is looking at how do we have conversations about cultural equity, right, in Baltimore City. And the Black Arts District in particular is looking at how we can support and celebrate and create opportunities for black creatives through our programming or other opportunities to put creatives to work to make sure that they are getting livable wages as creatives. That's really amazing. And it's crazy to think that um, the district is only about a year and a half old. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more about what area is included in the district and uh, what organizations and businesses are part of the district? Absolutely. Yeah, we are just a year old. Um, we were designated in, in July of uh, 2019. Um, and it's you know, it's interesting because although this has been a very short time for us, um, there has been a movement to create a cultural district in West Baltimore that is, you know, highlighting the, the story past of Pennsylvania Avenue that, you know, is centered around arts and entertainment for, for decades. And so we are, you know, bringing to fruition the work that has been done by many trailblazers that came before, you know, I was even on this earth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but having said that, yes, the district is, and you can see the map here, um, it is about 149 acre footprint in West Baltimore, primarily running along the Pennsylvania Avenue business corridor. Um, and so we go as far up to Fulton in Pennsylvania and then down, down to Dolphin in Pennsylvania and about a few blocks respectively east and west. It's kind of a little jagged map because what we did was we brought together community members, historians, et cetera, and we pinpointed um, either current sites that are, um, you know, working within the field of arts and entertainment or um, historic sites, right? Um, and we just kind of built the map around them. Um, and so some of those places include, you know, you have Upton Boxing, you have the Harris Market Center, which holds Jubilee Arts. You have the Shake and Bake Family Fun Center. You have the Historic Arch Social Club, right? You have the uh, Red Fox's Lounge, which was actually created by the comedian Red Fox, right? Um, and that's all the way up um, on Fulton. Uh, you have the Billie Holiday statue and the Royal Theater Marquee. So there are so many different landmarks and um, places and spaces on Pennsylvania Avenue um, that we are both honoring and also hoping to bring new development that will bolster right, um, the, the attractiveness of, of the Pennsylvania Avenue business corridor. Yeah, that's really awesome. Um, so like you said, you guys became a officially designated district in July of 2019. And that's also when you became the executive director. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, we actually became an organization in January of 2020. So that's why I've been saying okay. a year of our existence. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but we went into lockdown pretty, pretty soon after that. Um, how has the pandemic like shifted your focus within the district in the last 10 months? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it has not shifted our focus at all. If anything, I think we have continued to uh, do our work and increase the workload, right, to ensure that we can continue to support and celebrate and promote artists and creatives during this time when many of those same artists and um, particularly performing artists, but arts entrepreneurs as well have lost a significant stream of income. So we have kind of just increased our workload to make sure we can continue to support them through sponsorships, through, you know, micro grants. Um, we also partner with BOA and BCAN and some other organizations to roll out the, um, uh, the arts uh, emergency relief fund um, that, you know, gave micro grants to over 300 artists um, and creatives in Baltimore City. So we kind of just, you know, put our boots on the ground and made sure that we could support the community that we represent. Um, and we figured out that, you know, we couldn't roll out our own relief fund because, again, as a new organization, people don't know there's a lot of work that goes into that on the back end. Oh, yeah. right? <laughs> but what we did know that we could do as creatives ourselves is we we could put on a ton of events and use that as a way to pay artists to be artists, right? And to continue to engage community during a time where people just really needed hope. They really needed something to smile about, something to take their mind off of, you know, the constant news cycle about COVID-19. And so that's what we did. That's amazing. Um, 
one other thing I wanted to, to talk about was something that I really admire about the work that you're doing, which is that as you know, arts districts and placemaking have become more common in Maryland and a more common part of our collective vocabulary as artists and community members, um, we started to understand that there is sometimes an unintentional connection between artists and gentrification. And I really admire that the Black Arts District addresses this upfront in conversations about community investment. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about how you all plan to combat gentrification and center community sensitive development in the district. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's funny. I know when we were first thinking about the name of the district, right? Um, and, and, you know, in order for us to establish a district, we actually brought together a coalition of community organizations. CDCs, residents, right, artists. And one of the things that everybody was clear about is that Black needed to be in the name. And it wasn't just um, a symbolic gesture. For us, it was, you know, laying like claim and stake to this community being predominantly Black, the legacy of these communities being Black, and whatever future development happens needs to honor and support these legacy residents and the Black cultural experience that comes with, right, Pennsylvania Avenue in the surrounding communities. And that's important because when we think about gentrification, the, the sting of it really is the way in which um, the demographics and the places and spaces of communities are completely changed and erased and not honored in any way. That's really the sting of gentrification because it's not it's not the change, right? Change is necessary. Change has to happen. Communities should continue to grow and prosper and become, you know, as viable and healthy as they can. But when that is at the expense of the original community and the history of that community, that's where it becomes problematic. So for us, it was first we need to name, you know, what this community is, what it wants, what this community envisions itself to be. And then we need to work from there in connection with local government, state government, local CDCs, and everyone else who wants to come to the table to bring that vision to fruition rather than creating a new vision for West Baltimore. So I think that's where we are with um, the Arts and Entertainment District as it relates to gentrification. We recognize that there's a lot of change that needs to happen in West Baltimore because it has been neglected for so long as a result of redlining and disinvestment and you know <laughs> racial segregation and all kinds of covenants and other issues, right? And so we, we recognize because of that past, um, so much has been neglected and we want to be a part of that revitalization effort, but only, right, making sure it is only if it is in alignment with um, the community that is already there. And as an arts and entertainment district, we also want to make sure we honor the legacy of arts and entertainment um, in West Baltimore. Yeah, that's, I really love that. And I think that is um, so exciting that you're really centering the community and that revitalization. Um you guys have stayed very busy during the pandemic. Um, like you said, trying to provide opportunities for artists. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some programs that have happened over uh, the last 10 months and if there are places that folks can experience those programs if they missed them the first time around? Yeah, um, so uh, some of the programs have been um, archived on our Instagram. So for the ones that we were doing Instagram lives, you can definitely check those out um, in the events tab. Um, so, you know, over last year, we did a number of citywide visual and performative art competitions, right? And so um, on the slide here where you see the picture of Nina Simone, that was one of them, the Reflect the Times art competition where we had folks um, present some kind of art that was reflective of what we were going through through, right, as a nation, given what was happening with, say, the Black Lives Matter movement, COVID-19. Um, and so that was a really, really great competition. We had a number of other competitions as well, um, you know, which included some head-to-heads and, um, you know, uh, poetry competitions. And so we awarded over 20 different artist prizes through those competitions that we did. And um, we also partner with a lot of amazing organizations like Center Stage and BOPA to put on some citywide open mics. And so um, that other flight is from one of our open mics where we featured amazing local artists, Mike Even and um, Marin, I believe, who was a, a pre 
previous uh, Youth Poet Laureate in Baltimore City. Um, we also did the Mini May Concert Series, which was definitely a crowd favorite. We had about 3,500 people tune in over our segments um, that we have for the Mini May Concert Series. Um, we featured a number of local artists, performing artists here in Baltimore, and all of our headliners were also folks who got their start in Baltimore City as well. So we had Tate Cobang, we had Detronada, who was featured on The Rap Game, we had Davon Flemings, who was a uh, com competitor on The Voice. And we also had George Lovett, who was a competitor on American Idol. So it was a really good time and folks really loved it. So it was a it was a great thing that we were able to do. That's awesome. It sounds like quite the smorgasbord of Baltimore celebrities. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you guys have coming up um, in the future? Is, you yeah. know, what are you guys working on now? Um, so I guess the first thing is we definitely want to invite folks if they want to, you know, hear more about what has happened over our last year and what we have um, to look forward to over the next year. We're actually having our year in review community meeting coming up on the 28th. So folks can definitely come and, and, and check out what's happening. The, the link, because of course it's virtual, um, is on our social media. So our Instagram and Facebook page has the link for the actual meeting. Um, but um, so I invite folks to come out to that and they'll be able to ask questions and you know, hear about again, what we're gonna be doing. Um, but two things I do want to mention that we're gearing up for. Um, one is we are going to be hosting a artist fair um, in April, the very end of April and then the first day in May. <clears throat> and so we are really excited because, um, you know, the Black Artist Fair is going to be an educational and interactive event, right, designed to connect local Black artists to resources and services, right, that will further enhance their crafts and their careers and help them to monetize or professionalize their creative practices. And so we know that there aren't many spaces created like this, especially for Black creatives in the city. And so we are hoping that we can make this an annual event and scale it up each time so we can make sure artists get the kind of services they need to build up their creative practices. And the second thing is, I'm really excited that we are doing what we're calling right now the Historic Photography Project. And this is a creative placemaking initiative that we're piloting in West Baltimore in the district in partnership with T. Rowe Price, Art Social Club, Drew at Heights CDC, BOPA, um, Maryland Historic Society, and a number of other folks, right? Um, and the purpose really is uh, as a project centered around um, supporting the revitalization in West Baltimore by attracting new people and places, encouraging um, reinvestment through this creative placemaking project. But the ultimate idea is that we'll be preserving culture through storytelling and celebrating the people and places of West Baltimore. And so it's not just about those celebrities that we always hear about, like your Billie Holidays and your Cap Calloways, but it's also about the other people and places that make West Baltimore what it is. We really want to celebrate that legacy and that culture um, through these visual uh, installations. And so we are looking to connect with community folk because we want to collect your pictures or your stories to be a part of this project. And so if there are folks who are interested um, in either sitting on a committee or connecting with us to tell us about your stories, we're definitely open to that. And we encourage you to reach out to us, whether through our website or our social media pages. That's really great. Um... So now we are gonna turn it over to our audience question and answer. So a reminder to our audience, if you have any questions specifically for Lady Breon to go ahead and put them in the chat on Facebook or on YouTube. And let me see what we have here. So we have a lot of, people that are really excited um, that we're on here. So we have uh, hello ladies from Andrea Fountain Rothmaller and um, a thanks for pushing this out from Shakira Sykora. And let me see if we have any other questions coming in. Um, you know, I guess like while we're waiting maybe for some questions, uh, you could tell us a little bit more about um, what you're excited for. I know you just said that you guys have like a year in review coming up mm -hmm. um, and this, this history, 
photography project? Mm -hmm. um, is there a place where people can um, send images? Like if they if they live in the district or mm -hmm. if they want to learn more about these projects, where can they go to learn? Yeah, about those? So we actually just brought on um, a consultant who's going to be leading this effort. Um, her name is Angela Carroll, amazing um, sister here in Baltimore. She uh, does archival work and does community center work as an amazing researcher. And so one of the things that she has brought to the project is that we are looking to build out a space where we can archive images and keep them for people to visit, you know, outside of uh, the historical photography project that'll actually be like installations in the district. And so that that portion um, of our website is going to be built out soon, but it, it is not up and running yet. And so I encourage people to, again, just reach out to us and let us know if you have stories that you want to be shared as a part of this project or images that you want to be shared, articles that you want to be shared as a part of this project. And um, we will do the, the legwork in reaching back out to people to make sure we can collect those things once that part of our website is actually built out. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of like installations in in the community, historical or contemporary. Mm -hmm. I think that will be super exciting. Um, let me see. We don't have a ton of questions coming in, um, but maybe you could talk a little bit about, um, again, some of the organization. Oh, here we go. We have a question. Um, from Franco Salvatore. Um, is there volunteer work available for those who want to get involved at a community level? Sure. Um, so COVID is one of those things that... <laughs> cramping everybody's style. Yeah, just cramping all the things. And so, it, and so the question for volunteers, it gets a little tricky because we're not really doing much in person. Um, and so I don't know that we have a ton of volunteer work. What I do know is the artist fair that we are going to be putting on it. We're going to need help for that, even though it is going to be primarily virtual. Um, there, are, there are going to be a few things that will be in person. For example, we're going to be doing um, free headshots and, and product shots for people. And so those, you know, you can't do that virtually. So we're going to have um, scheduled uh, photo shoots for people um, at a site in the district. And we're also going to have some of our consultations that'll be in person where folks can have, you know, 30 minute sessions with uh, tax professionals or legal professionals, et cetera. Um, and so the point is running all these things simultaneously will take some volunteer work. And so if you're interested in volunteering for the artist fair, that's definitely something that we'd be interested in. Um, we are also, I don't know if you have a creative practice at all, but we're always looking for um, creatives that might be interested in working with us. And, um, you know, as we are brainstorming what kind of events we can do and what ways we can support, we're always checking in with creatives to make sure that we're aligned with <laughs> what makes sense for the creative community. So um, if that's you, that's another way that I think that you could definitely uh, reach out and work with us. Right. I noticed that you guys have been doing um, like spotlights on artists that live and work in the district. And mm -hmm. that has been really great as somebody that's involved in the arts to like have like a, a better understanding and like to be able to connect with people via their Instagrams uh, and see the work that they're doing. Because I feel like you can spend, you know, so much time in a place, but still not know all the creatives and everything that's going on. And I really have enjoyed um, seeing the spotlights on different artists in the community. So I, I really love that and would definitely suggest that if you're looking to work with a Black creative in Baltimore that you check out the, the district's um, Instagram because they're doing spotlights every, every week on different artists that live and work in the community. Absolutely. Thank you for putting that out. We try to be thoughtful. <laughs> So thank you for noticing. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, we do have a question here from Karen French, who's actually one of our conservators at the museum. And she asks if there's a plan for more murals um, in, the, in the area, illustrating some of um, Baltimore's black history in the area. That is a great question. Um, so I'll say a couple of things. Um, I know uh, Jubilee Arts as an organization, they have a mural program that they do, um, artists, arts at work 
I believe, um, that they do every summer with, and they, it, they bring on master artists that work with their young people to do murals every summer. And I know that some of them have themes around, um, you know, black history or, uh, communities in West Baltimore. And so I would imagine that's going to continue with Jubilee Arts. I know for us, with the Historic Photography Project, we are looking at different ways to display these pictures. And some of them we think can be, um, and for those of you who are muralists or photographers, please don't beat me up because I'm not going to say this right. But uh, there's a way where they can be printed and wrapped on buildings. I think is the correct term. And so they'll they'll kind of look like murals, right? In the way that they're presented on some of these especially vacant buildings that we can get right of entry for. Um, and then I would also say this is not connected to black history necessarily, but um, there is gonna be a new development happening on Penn North. This is gonna be a new um, part, I believe part artist housing, part uh, uh, just regular housing um, apartments. And then there's gonna be retail on the commercial level. And um, we're actually gonna, gonna be doing a mural competition for that building. Um, and so we're super excited to uh, be able to, to lead that over this next year. Um, so yeah, a lot, of, not, a lot of opportunities for murals in the Black Arts District coming up. <laughs> yeah, that's really, that's really awesome. And we, we had some images of those, of those murals in um, our presentation. Um, I don't see any other questions coming in um, for us, but I just want to say thank you so much to you, Lady Brian, for for being here with us today. Um, you can follow Lady Brian at Lady B Speaks on Instagram and Baltimore's Black Arts District um, at Official Black Arts District on Instagram, or you can visit their website at BlackArtsDistrict.org. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to send. Facebook. Yeah, we're also on Facebook, yeah. the same, same official Black Arts District um, on Facebook for, for those of us who are still on Facebook like myself. <laughs> yes, me too, definitely. And lots of our viewers here tonight. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here, for taking the time um, to share your insight with us. Um, I'm personally really excited to see what happens in the, the district to see these new projects, especially the history project, because Pennsylvania Avenue is so rich with the black arts and culture and history in Baltimore. And I, I'm really excited to see um, what happens there. And I, and I just wanna say a big thank you to everyone um, who tuned in tonight and a special thank you to our digital team for helping us um, get this off the ground and running. And a thank you to you, our audience, for showing up and spending this time with us. Um, and we hope you'll you'll join us for our next um, artist talk, which is with Latoya M. Hobbs this Thursday, the twenty first at five thirty. Um, and thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah, later no, later. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And happy belated MLK Day. Yes, <laughs> happy MLK Day. Thank you so much. Yeah. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for being.